wasn't always this beautiful. I know it's hard to believe that it takes a team to make someone look like this, but it does. When I was younger, I knew right away that beauty might be an issue for me. <laughs> now, I'm not saying I was ugly, but beautiful might be a stretch. The alfalfa hair, I think they missed alfalfa. My alfalfa hair, my chubby cheeks, my Michelin body. <laughs> I, had, I had very little to work with. I wanted to be a dancer from age two. I signed up for every, I did and of course my mom and dad did, signed me up for every dance class possible. I took tap, ballet, jazz, I even took from Jack Loizzo, for those of you that are Cincinnatians, he was like the bee's knees. Needless to say, I didn't last long. In case you were wondering which one was me. That was the time that I knew, at the age of two, that things were gonna be a little different for me, and I was going to have to make decisions based on what my God-given talents were. In kindergarten, I wore go-go boots and a mini skirt. Most of y'all are way younger than me, and in the 60s, that's how you dressed. But not in a conservative elementary school. I was sent to the principal's office, and I remember sitting in the chair. My feet wouldn't touch the ground, and I was just kicking my go-go boots. And I thought, this is cool. I'm going to get to go see the principal. Um, I got sent home and I had to change. I know, I know, it's sad. I know, I know. Then I went to Brownies. It was another situation where I didn't quite fit in. I got kicked out of Brownies. I don't know how you get kicked out of Brownies, but I got kicked out of Brownies. And then I thought, I wanted to be a domestic wonder. I'm taking home ec. I'm gonna learn to sew and cook and be that kind of woman. That was my goal. Didn't do so well with that either. My home ec teacher told me she's going to give me a D and not an F so she never has to see me again. <laughs> I know, trust me. These are, these are reasons why I went into education, I swear. <laughs> but all of these things led me in a different direction. What happened was I realized I didn't fit in. I didn't look like everyone else. I wanted people to accept me and I wanted to make something of myself and I wanted those differences to be a good thing. So I took what was not traditionally acceptable. I had the most beautiful sisters and mother. I went, once we went actually out to a restaurant when I was younger, I always wore jean overalls because I figured if you can't be good looking, be not. <laughs> and so I went to restaurants, you know, with my family and my sisters and my mom and the waiter said um, three for lunch and I was the fourth. I know, <laughs> I know. How ugly is that? 
So anyway, I decided that I just do art because I'm ugly and there's nothing else for me to do. That's what Andy Warhol said. It's not the truth, but it sort of became a stepping point for me, a place for me to say, this isn't working, I'm not fitting in, I'm not too good in school. I don't, my teacher saw that at a, at a little age, at kindergarten. My teacher let me use the easel every day, which made me super happy, but the rest of the class didn't like me so much. But I was able to find people from the get-go that said, you think differently, you see things differently, and we're gonna help you nurture that. And I was really fortunate that they didn't say, you don't do your ABC, so you don't get to do anything. It's like, let's focus on what you're good at. And through that, I was able to do well in school and I was able to focus on things that were important. I started making art, and this is how I became the most overeducated, self-taught artist, found my voice, and I haven't shut up since. I make narrative quilts, I tell stories with quilts. I want to get my point across to you and I do it with words and images, which is interesting because I was never a really good writer, but I like to write on my work and the work you see behind me. What happened was I went to classes, I thought I will learn, 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 learn. I was an undergraduate at UCDAA before the P and I graduated in drawing and ceramics, thought I was gonna be a super famous artist like right away. And I realized that I very much enjoyed going out every night after I worked in a restaurant and pretty much didn't make any art for years. And I volunteered at the Contemporary Art Center giving tours and realized that I loved teaching about art, which I never thought I'd do because my mom was a teacher and the last thing you wanna do is what your mother does, right? So I found out I loved that, and I went into teaching and I got my master's to teach. From that, I started taking workshops. I was mostly a ceramic artist. I wasn't getting my voice out. I didn't even know what my voice was. I was 40. I'm like, I don't even know what I'm saying with this stuff. And I went to a class and I was um, taking encaustic painting. And for those of you that don't know what encaustic painting is, it's one of the most time-honored, beautiful media that you paint with beeswax and you layer it. And, and the Roman sculptures were actually painted garishly and beautifully with this encaustic painting. So everyone in the class is like smarty pants and they know their art history and they're making these beautiful things. And then all I could think about is I have a three-year-old at home who is not potty trained. <laughs> and I am thinking through this class, listening and thinking, oh gosh, you know, do I put M&Ms in the toilet? What do I do? And I'd just seen a Dale Chihuly show and there were pooties. So I steal from people in case you haven't figured that out yet. I totally steal from everybody. And these, so Dale Chihuly did these pooties and I was just thinking of my pootie, my little baby Max, because you know, it made me not smart. If your kid's not toilet trained by three, it's definitely a genetic thing. It's your problem. So I started doing this encaustic painting about my three-year-old son, Max, not being potty trained in encaustic paints. And the teacher laughed. I mean, okay, again, I'm 40, right? I'm not like 20 where you're like, I just want to be accepted, but that's all I ever want to do is like be accepted. Um, so she said, you're funny and these are good stories and you should tell stories. I'm like, well, who cares? Like, who cares that my kid's not potty trained? She said, how many other people have a similar situation? They can relate to what your stories are based on the way you're putting yourself out there and you're being vulnerable and you're being funny and you're taking situations that are ugly or not good and making them playful and silly and appropriate. Well, not necessarily appropriate. So the other thing that happened is I got a divorce. Shocking. Somebody would leave this. But um, so I got a divorce and I was fixed up with every man on the face of the earth. I don't, you know, I, I don't know if y'all are single or not, or if you've been single. Well, I guess you had to be at one point, right? So, and then people fix you up with people and you're like, what? Really? Like where in the scheme of the world did you ever think the two of us would ever be in the same room at the same time, let alone date? So I did an entire series of dating, bad blind dates, um, uh, drowning in saliva was one of them. So what I did is that was where I started. And Again, I was getting out this angst. I was getting out this un not fitting in, not, nobody wanting to really, I went on a lot of first dates. So I had a lot, of, a lot of things to work with here. But I never really went on a second one. So, okay, so Craigie, this was the first piece of art I had um, accepted into a show. And it was um, a narrative quote piece. It was about, um, it was supposed to be about nature. There was a theme and I'm not really a nature girl. I really could care less. I think it's beautiful when you're driving in a car. Um, I had a, 
Um, I had a Volkswagen Beetle, but I really didn't. I had like a Subaru wagon, I think. Um, but before they were cool. Not like now, not like you know everyone in Colorado has one. No, this was before they were cool. Um, so, and this is me driving through Chicago, looking at nature with my windows rolled up and the air conditioning on. Um, and the other thing that I love is um, being on the beach naked, hello, and getting sand in your tushy. So that to me is like nature, and then of course sex is very natural, and I like that too. So, go ahead, babe. When, then this is part of the series of my dating, and I would tell my stories. My sister Andrea is a really good shopper. She went to um, Value City. She got an Escada Couture dress. This is 20 years ago. Those of you that don't know Escada Couture, trust me, it's like super cool, it's super expensive, and nobody at Value City knew what it was. So it was like a $3,000 dress she got for $150. It didn't fit any of us, but she figured at one point it would. Somebody would eventually fit into this like size <laughs> nothing dress. So I worked out, I went spinning, I didn't eat anything, I went on slim fast, I did everything I could to wear this dress because the man that I had a crush on was going to be at a benefit and my roommate, my old roommate, Cammie, invited me to go to, with her as her date and then I was going to wear this as a couture. So I went to my neighbors and um, she's a rabbi, he's a doctor and they had two kids. It took four people to get me in the dress. <laughs> I laid on the bed, they sat, the little boy sat on me and then we just squeezed me into this dress and I was coming out all over the place, which I thought was sexy. And my dad was watching my son Max and he's like, you cannot walk out of the house looking like that. I'm like, oh, thank God. So, <laughs> so this is one of the stories that I would illustrate about dating. This is the other thing, relationships. And I already warned Super Craig. These are his daughters. They didn't like me so much. I actually did find a man that really loves me for who I am, which is super special. Um, and yeah, but he gets to come home to this. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and, um, and I like sex, right? Win-win. <laughs> so the girls, the girl, his two daughters, beautiful, wonderful, did not like me. Again, I'm like, what is there not to like? And I didn't get it, and I tried everything, and I tried to buy their love, and I tried to, whatever. Nothing works, just trust me. Time works, nothing else. And so they were making pickles, and they thought they were all domestic and whatever, and cool, and the pickles were horrible. And um, <laughs> they were, so what I was doing was playing on the fact that they're horrible to me, which is kind of sour, pickles, the pickles were horrible, and um, I was in a pickle. Because here I am with a man I love, and his kids don't like me. So it was, but they were grown up too. I'm like, really get over it. But anyhow, okay. Okay, so nature, right? So I marry a whitewater kayaker. I'm dating a whitewater kayaker. I'm going to an art show. I look hot. I'm squeezing into my jeans that don't fit. And I got heels on like to die for. And we're driving out to West Virginia with a kayak on, our, on his car. And I thought, well, I'm not changing. So I'm sitting driving for like hours in this like really tight outfit because I wanted his friends to see how good looking I was. And we get out of the car, it's muddy, it's three o'clock in the morning and everyone's asleep. And Craig looks at me and I'm sinking into the ground in these ridiculous high heels because you never changed? And I'm like, no, I wanted your friends to see how good looking I am. So that didn't work so well. He took me kayaking, I shouldn't have been on the river, but you know kayakers, I don't know if you know them, but they're like, yeah, it's good, no, it's not good, yeah, it's good, Went in the, in the water, the air, the this, the that. Then they decided it was okay for me to go on. I went on a ducky, a ducky's like a blow up. So I went on this ducky, and, I'm, and, and Craig bought me an outfit, so that was nice. And so my, my outfit was super cool, everybody thought I knew what I was doing, which I clearly did not. I got, and I figured, you know, and he's like, all you, there's two things you need to know, or three things, but I can only remember two. Paddle like hell, and never get out of your boat. I don't remember what the third one is. It's probably don't have margaritas before you go. But um, I got stuck on a tree thing in the middle, which is super dangerous, and I could have died. And I'm, I'm stuck there, and I'm just sitting in my ducky, and Craig's like, get out of the boat. And I'm like, oh, no. I, I, no. I'm not getting out. No. And he's like, get out of the boat. I'm like, no, I'm good. I'm good. And finally, all of these guys come running after me and they're like, get out of the boat. And I'm like, oh, okay. So I get out of the boat. I pry, you know that adrenaline crazy shit? Man, that is amazing. I'm prying this thing, but I had cool shoes on. And one of my cool shoes fell in the river, which is like whoosh, crazy ass rapids. And I actually stuck my toes in the river, got my 
polo gym shoes, and I flipped it into the boat, jumped in, and started paddling like hell. <laughs> and then I thought it'd be sexy, and I got Victoria's Secret undergarments, which I didn't know kayakers do not wear. So, um, but this is what this story is about. Always trying to fit in, always trying to find my place, always not quite fitting in, but actually enjoying that. Um, do we have a picture of the inside? Yeah, this is the inside. It's X-rated. Okay, go ahead, babe. So, through my making art, I started to work for Artworks. And if I get verklempt, I apologize, because this is a super verklempting thing. Um, we do wonderful things for Children's Hospital. And uh, the first piece I did for Children's Hospital with a group of students was um, Katie's Kingdom. It was in the cancer clinic. She passed away. Her parents paid for this, and we made the art. We made a horrific area, a horrifically ugly thing as beautiful as we could for those kids going in every day. And so that was, um, sorry, I told you, verklempt. Um, but it made us all feel like we were doing something. It was a situation we couldn't help other than to just make it a little more inviting and a little prettier. And when we did that, and we walked away from this feeling like we actually changed lives. And that's what art can do on so many levels. It can truly, truly change lives. And so the next thing that I'm doing now, I'm working on a series of working actually with cancer patients at Children's and making individual pieces of art that will be installed. So I'm still working in that way, just in a very different kind of um, storytelling for them. And they're actually individual stories. And I'm, I'm, I'm on my 45th piece for children's, which is I get to meet them and talk to them. And I went once and there was this, this family from um, Iran and he only spoke Arabic. The dad and the little one didn't speak anything. And they gave me a list of words and we became friends because I tried to say Arabic words. A nice Jewish girl, can't even speak barely English, let alone Hebrew. And now I'm trying to speak Arabic to this man. And it was like a complete love. We just like totally, you know what I mean? You had that connection and it mattered. It mattered what we were doing and it mattered that we were helping tell their stories in a very beautiful and engaging way. From that, I realized I like collaborations. I have like big ideas and I'm only one person and I work full time and I have a kid and I have a husband who wants sex all the time. I don't, you know, I can't make this big shit by myself. And plus, like Josh, we met because he helped me with CAC TV and I invited him here today. And I found that there's all these amazingly creative, wonderful people out there that want to make shit and want to make the world a better place. And it's such a wonderful thing that we have in Cincinnati so much so. But anyway, I was one of the designers and the people that helped with Paint the Street. Talk about ugly. This thing was scary town as it was happening. The whole time we're all going, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. Is that gonna be okay, is that gonna be okay? And when it all came together, it was beautiful. And there were over a thousand community members and people, artists, non-artists that came together and created this wonderful, wonderful street painting. Um, and I thank Margie Waller if she's anywhere in here. And I super have to take t thank Tamara Harkavy for everything she's given me and the opportunities at Artworks to make my voice bigger and make it reach a bigger audience. So then came the yarn bombing. And this is a quote by Amy Sedaris. And I don't know if you know Amy Sedaris, but she's David Sedaris' sister. And she actually does those Downey commercials now. She's really funny. But she wrote a craft book and she said, only ugly people craft because good looking people are too busy having sex. <laughs> so having said that, we started the bombshells. And the bombshells are a collective of like-minded people that make knitted and crocheted things and we cover objects with them. It's graffiti art without permanently damaging an, an object. And we beautify an area. We draw attention to something that at one point might have been ugly, but now you pay attention to it. Or a sculpture that we ask permission, by the way. We are so like middle-aged ladies that do not look good in stripes. Do you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, um, so we went and we worked with the, the Reds and we've worked with the CAC and the Art Museum. We've done it in Chicago. And, but we just, it's a total love fest. We sit around, we teach each other things, we, we collaborate, we brainstorm, we drink a lot of bourbon, and we make art, and we do it together as a collective. This is my most recent collaborations. What I told you earlier is I found out that I have like pictures in my head I can't do by myself. 
Um, I just, I don't have the time and I, shit, I don't have the energy. Um, so what I do is I call my friends and I'm like, I have this idea. It's the Art of Food at the Carnegie Art Center. And I want us to make this blow up edible couture fashion show. And like my friends are so used to me saying something and they're like, okay, sure, okay. What does that mean? I'm like, I don't know. I don't know. I don't even know. And so what, what, it, what I found out that I do and I feel like it's such a thing that I'm, it's such a gift that I have that I get these body of people, these friends that will dress up for me and be body painted like candy canes or show up at events wearing what was it the last time you two were the Tweedledum and Tweedledee? Um, over here, and Laura is a pink flamingo. But they're just, and Chaz is going to be a naked god next time, and Caitlin. And just coming and saying, what are you doing? Can I be part of it? Can we make this bigger? Can we make it louder? Can we make it more obnoxious? Yes, we can. But we need a team. We need a group. And, and, um, and actually, I just, I just texted Chaz, our, our castle maker, because we're doing... Um, Candyland and our castle maker can't make a castle so I texted him I'm like can you make a castle he said I can make you a thousand castles I will do whatever you want he has no idea how big this castle is but that's okay he already signed on um, so what so what this one was was every artist had a different um, food and candy or whatever and they made couture out of it and I we sit together like we're going in undergrad and we sit around and we crit and we bring that craft back together where you're not alone and somebody was talking to me recently about the fact that as artists designers musicians often you're alone and you're making your stuff alone and then you're putting your stuff out there and it's a very scary line it's I'm comfortable in my studio I'm comfortable doing what I'm doing but now you want me to put myself out there and this is it's it's a really weird little dichotomy or juxtaposition I don't know those are two big words look them up let me know later um, but they it's one of those things that it's you know it's forcing forcing us to do something we're not comfortable with and like this is I'm super nervous right now just kidding um, <laughs> But every time I do one of these things, I will get an email or a phone call. It's like, or I'll say, I, I want these windows designed. And we sit around as a group and say, oh, I know a professional window designer. Who knows a professional window designer, my friends? And so I email them, and they're like, yes. I'm like, I don't pay. I pay with beer. That's great. I'm like, you're kidding. I'm like, really? And it's just about the joy of making, the joy of creating. And yes, we should get paid for what we do. Do not get that from this takeaway. Yes. Artists, designers, musicians, we should get paid for what we do. But there's and a lot, a hell of a lot. Thank you, sister. Can I get an amen? amen. All right. But sometimes we just make shit because we're having so much fun, we can't not. And that's, that's what this is. <laughs> so, oh, wait, go back, go back, go back, because I want to talk about this one. So um, I just have to tell you about my process, because my process of making art is pretty damn ugly. I had an outfit in my head that I was making, but you know when you're doing everything else and you're teaching and you have a kid and you have to have sex all the time, you don't really have time. So I didn't have my outfit done. And I was like the day of art of food. I put the skirt on that I had a student make for me and it sucked. It was <laughs> awful. And um, so I took one of my eight foot puppet dolls and I took her skirt off and I wore it. So um, this, this piece goes to, thank you. I love him. Um, so this is the skirt off of one of my dolls that you'll see later. And this next one is called Candyland, and we're doing, and Jean Robert is Lord Licorice, and he's a chef in town, and he's just got a great sense of humor. My friend Carl is making his um, outfit, so he'll be Lord Licorice. We have a dancer that's gonna be King Candy. I, of course, will be Queen Frostine, because it doesn't get any better than this. So, all right, babe. This is something recently that I did, and I think the reason I really want to share this with you is that this is non-artists creating art. And it's very much so, look, I'm going to make a connection, kind of like what Red Door Project is doing. It's allowing people that want to create and, and want their voice out there and want to be part of something, but they're not traditionally trained or they're just interested and they want to step outside what they do. And so uh, we did a rainbow dinner party on top of the Weston Gallery. 
And that's another thing about Cincinnati, ask and ye shall receive. You go and you ask and you tell people and you say and you show them images and ideas and they're like, what can we do for you? And, and an example of that was this. We went to the Weston Gallery, nobody's been on that roof and it, on top of the Aronoff and he took us up there, Dennis Harrington, and he's like, will this work? And of course I'm scared of heights. I'm like, yes, this will work if I can just stand here and hold on. But um, we did a rainbow dinner party, sort of an answer in a way, inspired by dinner au blanc, but doing it in a very, um, in, uh, you know, in colorful, wild picnic on top of the roof. And this was only to be viewed from on top of Crew Tower. There were five different um, curated pieces of art. Maria Cita Reader uh, curated this piece for us. And these are, again, friends and friends of friends and people I don't know that just showed up and had a color on. And we had a picnic on top of a roof, just for the pure joy of someone getting to see it from a distance. Recently, and I know some of you have been there with me, um, the Contemporary Art Center completely changed my life. In the 80s, when I told you that I was actually 70s, I just don't want to think I'm as old as I am. In the 70s, I was a docent at the Contemporary Art Center. I found out I liked talking about art. I found out I wanted to teach. Um, and it, it was life changing. I went back and got my um, master's in education and I went back to teach and I've been teaching for 22, 23 years. And um, I would not have done that. I would have, I don't know what I would, well, I'd probably be drinking bourbon, but I'm doing that now anyway, but I probably would have, I don't know. I don't know. It was a life changer. And so my first show, my first museum show was at the Contemporary Art Center in the Young Museum. So it was sort of this, this long love affair that I've had, and they invited me to do something in the Young Museum. And um, am I okay? I'm almost there. Okay, um, so I did a thing called CAC TV, and it was to make art history and contemporary art accessible and understandable. And that's why in the tagline for this, I said art, contemporary art is not a spectator sport. I want you to be involved. I want you to participate. I want you to interact. And this was a way to do that. And the CAC asked me to do these TV shows, three of them. And um, part of my band, Vincent Van Gogh. <laughs> Degas dancer. So my friends again came and we dressed up and we acted and we taught people the beauty of art history, the, what the Contemporary Art Center has done for the city, and again, the beauty of collaboration. What you can do when, when we all work together to make something much bigger. And this was the quilt that I most recently finished with about 20 of my friends that I just started passing out pieces and said, can you do this, can you do this, can you do that? And they did, and they all brought it back. And, and we put it all together two days before it was supposed to be installed. This thing is 30 by 20 feet, there's another one that's 20 by 20 feet. And again, in the sort of the same way where it is an ugly process. You do not know what's gonna be until it happens. And then you just hope that your vision all comes together right. And sometimes it doesn't and you go to the fabric store and you buy a ton of blue fur and it helps. <laughs> Trust me. So like the bombshells, when we did our first installation on um, um, Central Parkway, there were 150 people doing something that didn't know there were 149 other people doing the same thing or something similar. And we all showed up together and we all threw on blonde wigs and black sunglasses and we installed and it was just this crazy flash mob of art making. In a way, so was this. A very crazy, it was a very well thought through, fingers crossed, art project. Talking a little bit just briefly about the fact that I never thought I was beautiful. I, I always had those feelings of um, always being chubby, always fighting my weight, hair never the way I wanted it. Um, I had cool clothes. And I think Coco Chanel is the one that said that you're not ugly if you have good shoes. So is that her? I don't know, but, it's but you like, gosh, you. <laughs> But that's sort of the way I lived my life. And I actually always wanted to be a cheerleader. Did not make it, but I was a UC Bearcat. So I like the, in the costume, the mascot, I was the short one. Um, so, but I like that idea of dressing up. And I like that idea of coming outside of myself. I totally stole that from Cindy Sherman. 
steal, she's a, she's a, a photographer, look her up, you will love her if you don't know her. Steal from everybody. Steal, make it your own. And that's sort of what we did. That's what the bombshells did. We totally bought a book on yarn bombing and we're like, how do you be a yarn bomber? And oh, my name's Pinky Shears, by the way. So this is me as Pinky Shears. This is from a photo shoot um, from uh, the beauty queen, the superhero, and the peanut, which you'll see in a second. This was Beautiful Cupcakes. I did a show because I didn't know what to do. And it was three months before the show, my solo show, my first solo show and three months in and I don't know what I'm doing and my husband and my son and I went to Starbucks and they had cupcakes and the lady said would you like to try a beautiful cupcake I'm like yes and I ran out to the car and I'm like skipping with my cupcakes I'm like beautiful cupcakes we get to try and the guys are like what who cares I'm like oh my god that's my show so I did an entire show about beautiful cupcakes and my obsession with food and my love hate and blah 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 all that stuff but so this was my photo shoot Nice cleavage, thank you. Um, and then this was my wanting to be domestic and I never was. I had my numerology done, I'm a six. That means I'm back on this earth this time to learn to be domestic. I'm not going to be able to master it. I gotta come back and do it again. So fuck it, I'm not even trying. <laughs> so I don't cook, I don't clean, I don't anything. But this is what I would look like if I did. <laughs> And then it was a CAC's birthday, and I figured you got to jump out of a birthday cake, right? Yep. So I did. So for CAC TV, that's what I did. But all of these things and a ton, a ton of Photoshop, trust me, and a little bit of Botox and a ton of Photoshop, and, um, and friends. My friends were like, I have this idea. I want to do it. Will you? And can you make me look like this? And they do. And so I, I always like when people would go to the CAC and see my show in the upstairs, and they're like, is that like your sister? I'm like, uh, no, that's me with Photoshop. Um, so, but my last story that, oh, this was, this was the piece of art that really made me realize that not being pretty and not being a beauty queen and thinking myself ugly was a really good thing for me. I wanted to be a beauty queen. I wanted to be the, um, the honeybee festival queen. You know her? I could have been her. They don't have her anymore, probably because they didn't pick me. Um, but I wanted to be a beauty queen, and I wasn't. And then in, in kindergarten, I wasn't very popular, remember? Because I had the easel, and everybody wanted the easel, and I didn't have to do my ABCs, and they did. So I wasn't popular, and I thought, well, if I bring Batman to show and tell, people will like me. So I wanted to be the superhero back here. And this is the beauty queen, and this is the superhero. And then my nickname was Peanut, which I hated my entire life. I know, everybody's damn nickname is Peanut, right? Um, I, thought it was, I thought it was the only one, and then every time you meet someone, oh yeah, that was my nickname. Um, but I found out that being Peanut and being myself and doing what I love was really the best thing to be, and not, not wanting to be something else, but to be what I am and be the best at it that I can be. And so, that's my story. I'm sticking to it. <laughs> Thank you. You keep talking, I got giveaways. You need a beer, bombshell beer. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Some of you guys, men in here, look like you might need a beer. Okay. <laughs> Questions? Anyone? Okay, okay. Oh, okay. Um, I used to always go to St. Teresa's Textile Trove, and I still do. You need one of those. Um, and I um, go now to Silk Road Textile, and recently, and I'm not kidding about the CAC piece, it was the day before the installation, and you know, they have a team installing, and it, and it just wasn't working. It truly was not working. This was like a, a nine-month project that was not working, and I went to the... Um, the, um, what's that place in Covington where you got costumes? Theater House. And they had rolls of blue and pink and green fur, and I bought a lot. And I just filled it with it to make it pop, and it was the right answer. So, um, and I would not have known that place existed except for the dinner party where I made a pink jacket out of fur. Okay, anybody else? Question? Oh, yeah. 
participate. Oh my god, totally just like like Facebook message me. <laughs> <laughs> Anyone else? Yeah. When did you start making your Mary Um, I that I made those. Uh, I think 2007. What happened was, um, I um, if it doesn't fit, I don't care. Um, so I made it because what what happened was they asked me to do a piece in the museum. I wanted it to be interactive and contempt and computer stuff was super cool and everybody was doing computer stuff. So I started reading computer stuff and I said to Craig, I go, I want to make this computer generated installation of bleh, and he's like, what? It's like, you don't even like know how to turn your computer on. I go, I know, but that's what's in. And he said, you have to do what you do. And what I do is the quilts and the stories on the quilts. And I wanted to do puppets. And I did, um, so that was when it started, to make them on a pulley system and interactive. And then I got a teaching grant to go to Prague to learn how to truly make a marionette. And I spent this last summer making um, Jingle Bell Yosemite over here, which is actually my stripper name. Um, it's the first, your first pet and the first street you lived on. And I got incredible tattoos made that, um, of Jingle Bell Yosemite, which were amazing. So, um, but that's where it started. And I'm kind of going back, and now I'm going back into more traditional puppetry. But I was in Prague, and I said to the lady, I said, I'm really embracing the Czech aesthetic. And she's like, honey... I mean, a broken check. She didn't say it like that. She didn't say like a New York Jew. She said, um, honey, she said, um, uh, that is so American. You are so American. I'm like, really? I thought that looked like a Czech puppet. And then I also thought it looked like me, and everybody's like, that is ugly. I'm like, that is, shut up. That's my stripper name. That's me. Uh, okay, anybody else? Yeah. Oh, good question. Um, Art of food, coming up. Um, designing a bike rack, which is funny because I don't bike other than on a spinning bike because the streets scare me. And I got this really nice, sexy pink bike, like a like million dollar bike for a birthday present from someone. And I haven't touched it and it's like 12 years old now. Um, but I'm designing a bike rack for my neighborhood and I'm doing 15 more pieces for children's and I'm, I'm teaching art full time and I'm having sex with my husband. <laughs> but I... Yeah, you know. Um, I do have, I'm totally going to like pimp myself out. Hello, since you asked, if you want a card about the art of food. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anybody else? Yeah. What's your neighborhood? Um, I live in Columbia, Tusculum. Yeah, which I, when I was in um, undergrad at UC and I drove through there for my architect class, which I totally was over my head and I didn't get it. Um, but I, look, I looked at those buildings and I'm like, this is where I want to live one day. And then when, um, when I, I was, uh, my husband and I, when we got married, we both wanted a total change. I said, there's this neighborhood I've been in love with my entire life. I never left Cincinnati, by the way. I don't even go to Northern Kentucky. Um, so I lived here. I went to undergrad school. I went to Miami. I never leave my bubble. And actually, the only time I go past the 275 loop is to go to work, but then I come right back. So I'm a total Cincinnati girl, and I'm really excited that that dream of mine, I get to live in it. But we're really not in a painted lady. It's sort of, but not really. Yeah. Favorite color? Oh, hello, chartreuse. Chartreuse. <laughs> uh, what artists are you inspired by? Oh, really good question. Wow, wow, wow. OK, for sure, Cindy Sherman. I love Frida Kahlo. I do. I know. It's cliche. Um, but I do. I love her pain. I love her agony. Um, I love Tadashi Murakami. Japanese artist that makes some crazy, colorful, wild stuff. Um, I am super inspired by my friends. I know, cliche. But it's true. Like, they're doing something, and then I totally steal it from them. And then I do it, and I tell everybody I made it. <laughs> but kind of that. <laughs> Can we do one more? Yeah. And I still have tons of things to give away. <sighs> OK. One more? I was going to ask you guys a question. Um, I'm just kidding. The, the nice thing about me is I'm, I think I'm like the most interesting person I know. So I don't even know what I'd ask you guys. But um, <laughs> if we want a yarn bomb, if anybody wants to out there, we are going to show you how to make pom-poms. And we can leave them in, um, in the Red Door Project for tonight. And also, so I have a bunch of those. I have some more beer. <laughs> I should throw the beer. <laughs> Sorry, I'm, I have a left-handed throw. Hey, Pam, I've got a question. Okay. Okay. Do you, uh, in your process of making some of the artwork that you made, 
so yes. a collage and piece together, is, is what you start with, does it end up making its way into a final piece, or do you? Always. 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 I never throw anything out. I'm too lazy. It takes too long. I'm like, really? That like takes like 12 hours to beat a damn eyeball. But it's ever my sister does it. She's an attorney and she's super anal, and so whatever for her. But um, I, I know, and that's why things are crossed out and things are overlapped because if I spend all that time, it's got to go somewhere. And that's sort of the ugliness of the process. It's like it might not work and it shouldn't work, but it's, yes, it's going to. And is that okay that I cuss? I apologize. I teach high school and I, I don't at school. I promise. <laughs> but. <laughs> it's all right, we're all done. Right? <laughs> 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 yeah. <laughs> all right, well, you can out the rest of that stuff. A couple real quick wrap up announcements. Um, we have 10 Skillshare Ooh. memberships to give out. So we're going to start in an effort to start getting up to this communication. We are challenging all of you to take ugly photos of yourself. Do you want to start passing? Yeah, you Submit can. Submit it yeah. on Facebook, Instagram, tag us. And we'll give it, let's say we'll give it a week or so, and then we will start giving out some Skillshare memberships. We're a full one-year member. So we appreciate that. Again, 30-second pitches. Thank you. If anybody wants to talk in front of our audience, has something really good that they want to throw out there, let us know. He's Natty at creativemornings.com. And as always, hmm? if you're interested in volunteering... Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it's my left hand. I can't wave you left hand. I understand. That was good. Yeah, start throwing. That's what Craig said. Sorry. I hope I don't hit anybody in the face. Well, like I said, if you're interested in volunteering, you know, we start doing these events where we have setups. It's always nice to have some more pair of hands, uh, more greeters, more people to talk to everyone. So let us know. Um, I'll email Facebook, Twitter, all the things. Sorry. And thank you, guys. Feel free to hang around and uh, do pom poms and <laughs> catch things throwing at your face. Oh, did you talk about the ugly portraits? Yes, we did. I was taught. I was throwing. It's all right. All right. We multi that. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you guys. Thank you.